lead us in an invocation. Commissioner Pettis, would you lead us in an invocation, please? Thank you. Um, dear Jesus, we thank you for this um, wonderful day that we're having. Um, we ask that you watch over us and continue to bless us and take care of us. Uh, we ask that you, in your wisdom, uh, grant us the patience and understanding to do what we have to do. And we ask that you watch over everyone in the city of Harnagen, in our country, and continue to bless us all. Let's go to this name, Sir Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. I'd like to welcome everybody to the meeting tonight. Glad to have all of you here. Uh, I'll formally now call the meeting to order. And first item on the agenda is citizen communication. I'll call on, on the city secretary to identify Mayor, those who signed up. Mayor, we have four. And the first one is Sam Lozano, 2410 Riverside Drive, item number 15. Uh, term limits. He'll defer until that item is called. Hmm? He wants to wait until. He'll call that item. Okay. Mayor, would you want do you want to wait until item yes. 15, or do you would you like to go now? No, All right. I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Appreciate you very much. All right, thank you. The next one is Francisco Lozano. I don't know if he's probably. He's all in the same posture. Where is he here? Uh, or are we going to call him? He's, he's, uh, he works right now, so he, he wants to wait for item 15. All right, we'll call him again on uh, item 15. Okay. Ron Lozano? I, don't I, I have uh, two items, uh, and I want to wait for those items to be called. Okay. One of them at the very, one of them is the very end of the agenda, okay. pretty much. Okay, and, and then we have Don Ray Leonard. My name is Don Ray Leonard. I uh, reside in District 1. This past year, I relocated to Harlingen from Georgia. As a former county GOP board member, I stand well qualified to speak on issues associated with conducting elections. While researching for the May 1st election, I had difficulty finding information on candidates and polling places. I could not locate a sample ballot. There were no elections office to get answers to my questions. Then I learned that our city secretary was in charge of the elections. When things are this confusing for a new citizen or a first time voter, one may easily opt out of voting altogether. What I and many others have experienced is a form of voter suppression. Knowledge is power. We need a strong and informed electorate. If our citizens can't find the information they seek, they won't vote. When the information is not flowing, the process becomes frustrating and confusing and voter confidence in the system diminishes. I spoke with many voters during this election cycle and they agree wholeheartedly with my assessment. In terms of liability, with elections so contentious and multiple lawsuits being brought against municipalities due to voter fraud and questionable voting practices, it would seem prudent to have an insurance policy for the possibility of litigation against our city. I strongly encourage the city of Harlingen to contract with Cameron County to conduct our citywide elections. The cost will be low, but the return on investment will be high. Cameron County has the experience in running elections. They are experts in election code and can provide the voter with a consistent voting experience. But more importantly, they will create voter confidence in the process. Commissioners, we the voters pray you consider our request. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next item, that, that's it. That's for it. The, that's right, it we'll call those others uh, all out of 15. Item one is the proclamation proclaiming July 7, 2021, as Azuzina Nazar <coughs> of Osena Zina Day. So, this is a great, this is a, a really great opportunity. Thank for our community and a really great day. We want to be great, great uh, youth of our community. So, uh, Zena, come on, come on up here. The way we usually do this is we have Zena come up here and we have one of the board members if you want to 
vaccinated, talk, you can talk here as well and stand behind, stand behind the issues as we present this proclamation. two-time State of Texas Youth of the Year and was chosen to represent the Southwest region in the National Youth of the Year competition to be held later this year in Washington, D.C. And Razina, a 10-year member of the Boys and Girls Clubs of Arlington, earned her title based on her service as a club member for the local organization and for her accomplishments in the club, the school, and family life. And whereas overcoming a variety of personal and societal hardships Zena earned the respect of panels of luminaries such as judges of both the state of Texas and Southeast region levels through her speech, detailing her story of the proud boys and girls from the world who shaped her life and put her on a road to success. <coughs> Whereas Zena plans to attend the University of Texas at Austin, where she will study pre law in pursuit of her desire to serve the interests of abused and neglected children. <coughs> received numerous scholarships to the Youth of the Year program. Zena looks forward to the challenge of representing over 4 million young people nationwide with the Boys and Girls Club of America National Youth of the Year. <coughs> now there are five four. I'm Chris Boss of the Maryland City of Arlington on behalf of the entire City Commission. You're here by deem it an honor and pleasure to begin <coughs> this recognition to Ms. Zena Nazar Alicena Zena and the National Youth of the Year finalists, Boys and Girls Club in America, proclaim July 7, 2021, and Zena and the Senate have all citizens to join me in congratulating Zena for her great accomplishments and best wishes for more productive years. Well, not, all I'm going to say is you said everything anybody would want to say. Uh, I just want to address our commissioners. I want to thank you all. Uh, the support of the city of Harlingen makes young people like this possible. She would like to speak. And she's far more worthy than I am. So, Zena. Okay, I'm Zena. <laughs> Asusana Nazara Asusana. Okay. <laughs> Who was I? A young child just dreaming of someday going to Disney. Instead, my life was like a race with hurdles. There was obstacles every step of the way for me. Obstacles like growing up with a single parent who didn't know how to read and write, being a witness to abuse, not being financially f able to do the things I enjoyed, and growing up in public housing. All of these events and more have attempted to rob me from my childhood and forced me to grow up way too quickly. Who am I? 
One day, an event occurred that would change the course of my life forever. I walked into the Boys and Girls Club filled with anxiety and anger. That was when the club director, Miss Hilda, told me all about the programs the club had to offer. This is when the club experience began playing one of the most important roles in my life. I started attending daily, nearly 10 years now to be exact. I have acquired so many skills, more than I ever imagined achieving this early in my life. Some of these include leadership, character, and health and wellness. I am currently Keystone president and a part of junior staff where I have seen firsthand the difference mentoring can really make in a person's life. I was president of the National Honor Society and attended early college high school where I maintained a 4.0 GPA. I have become a great leader with integrity and the longing of making a continuous difference. I am so thankful and blessed that my Boys and Girls Club has provided me with the best club experience and a safe haven from the pressures and challenges a young person faces every single day. Who will I be? Well, you've heard who I was and you've heard who I am. This is who I will be. Because the Boys and Girls Club was the right place at the right time, my life is now defined by my club experience. I'm on a path to reach my full potential as a productive, caring, responsible citizen. I will be attending the University of Texas at Austin and studying hard to become a child abuse lawyer. With my work, I will continue to spread the message that boys and girls clubs are the hope for America's youth. I am a living example that great futures start here. Someday, I plan to be a leader in this movement, so together we can continue to fulfill our promise whatever it takes to find their greatness. That's what my club did for me. Uh, and again, I'd just like to express my gratitude towards the Boys and Girls Club. You see, the club has made such a huge impact not only in my life, but countless others' lives. For example, the Boys and Girls Club is the reason why my brother and I will be the first to go to college in our family. My fellow Keystone member, Jessica, will also be the first to do so in her family. And my fellow member, Lily, was able to get her first job and purchase her first car. These are just some goals that we all had that the club helped us accomplish. You see, that's because that's what the Boys and Girls Club does. It's much more than a program or uh, just a building. It's a family. It's a home. Speaking for myself and hundreds of others, I'm sure my house is not the place I like to be at or the place I consider a home. My club is a home. That's what I feel like a home should function like. It's where I feel loved, it's where I feel appreciated, it's where I feel supported. I've had so many mentors that have just worked with me and worked with me so that I get to the closest, the best version of myself I can be. And that's what happens to every club that, and every kid that enters the club. The club just changes their lives and helps them become the best version of themselves. So I thank you guys for being a part of this and supporting the Boys and Girls Club the way you do. You're just creating more Xenas out there, and I'm so thankful to all of you. I'd also just like to add one more thing. I am president of the Torch Club, or you might know us as Torch Club since we were little. That's how we grew up, but now it's called Keystone Club. And one of the most important lessons we've learned is to give back to our community and help others. In order to give to others, our group raises money each year by selling cupcakes and other items. In the past, we have given money to an injured police officer, an injured firefighter, helped a veteran whose home was destroyed by a fire, and provided a great birthday party for a young deaf child in Lemoyne Gardens who had never had a birthday party before, as well as numerous other gifts. Because of that belief, it is my pleasure to present a check in the amount of $500 for money we raised during this year's pandemic to be split by our Harlingen police and firefighters to use however they please. All right.
once again, congratulations from all of us. And we know that you're going to win when you go to Washington, D.C. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, I know you are. And so we're very proud of you. This is a big deal for our city. And thank you for representing the city of Harlingen so well. Thanks again to all our, our board members of the Boys and Girls Club. Thank you. Item two, I get, Trey, you're going to wish that I did the, you first, because that's going to be a tough act to follow. <laughs> Special recognition to Trey Peacock, former Planning and Zoning Board member. Come on. Consent agenda items 4A through D is or, wait, oops. Approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of April 7th, 2021. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Motion for an approval. Second. Right, motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, minutes are approved as presented. Consent agenda items 4A through D is or motion to adopt the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Right, motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 As opposed to like sign the motion carries. Uh, I've been asked uh, to pass item five uh, at the request of Chief Kester. Right. You wanted us to pass this item, right? That's correct, Mayor. We got to make a few changes on it. Okay. All right. Thank you. <coughs> item six is uh, consideration of <coughs> action to authorize city manager to, on behalf of the Harlan Police Department, to accept a donation of $1,000 from Mr. Bob M. Knight, a longtime resident of Harlingen. Chief. Mayor, commissioners, to keep in the going of a very generous and uh, thankful community. Mr. Bob Knight uh, approached me about three weeks ago wanting to make a donation to the police department, as long as it was something used specifically for the police department, and we talked to him, and that's why I'm here today. He wants to make a $1,000 donation to the police department. Our plan is to use that to purchase Narcan for the patrol officers who are out there on the streets because our current supply has expired, so we need to replenish it anyways. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to be here tonight to say a few words, but uh, we really appreciate the thoughtfulness of Mr. Knight. All right. Is there a motion to uh, accept the donation? Yeah. Mayor, we have Ron Lozano wanting to speak on item six. Oh, okay. Uh, One-time allocation is what I call this. Some in the room, like a next-door neighbor of mine, Mr. Bob Knight, is familiar with an American Express catchphrase, wealth has its privileges. So if that refrain is pursued here, can we expect HPD to perhaps be more protective of Mr. Knight and his family? The monetarily wealthy get more and better protection under this guise. That is, as an example that he was cited earlier at a budget workshop today, limited drones. Thank you. Is there, is there a motion to accept the donation? So move. So move. Second. Second. All right. Whatever. 
We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Item 7, consideration of possible action to approve an interlocal agreement between the City of Harlem Police Department and Indian Lake Police Department for the donation of one general fund police vehicle to be used solely for official police purposes. Chief. Uh, Mayor, Commissioners, it's our turn to be on the giving end now. Uh, I was approached by Chief Paul Campbell from Indian Lake, of course, a very small community, uh, limited resources, and he asked if we had any vehicles we could uh, donate over to them for their use, and we're in the process of, you know, auctioning vehicles off, so uh, we were going to donate a 2005 Crown Victoria with a little over, I think it's just under 100,000 miles. Uh, what I like to call my James Bond car because it was actually fleet number 007. So, yeah. <laughs> but it's been with the department. It's a good working car, and rather than us auctioning it, I'd like to donate it to Indian Lake. Motion to approve. Second. I second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like so. <laughs> motion carries. Item 8, consideration of possible action to approve a facility use agreement between the City of Harlech and the Harlech National Youth Football League for the fields of Victor Park and authorize the City Manager to execute the agreement. Good evening, Mayor, City Commission. Um, we are asking the City Commission to consider um, approving this uh, facility use agreement. Last year in 2019, of course, we didn't have any of the uh, youth using our fields or playing or having activities uh, due to COVID. And so the um, Two youth groups have uh, approached us wanting to um, get out and get the kids uh, active again. And so um, the Harlingen Youth, National Youth uh, Football League have provided all the documentation uh, required. And um, the agreement that we're proposing is for 14 months. Uh, it'll be uh, effective July and run through uh, September 30th. So it'll coincide with our fiscal year. Anybody have any questions about the oh, on agreement? The on the future ones, will they go back to 12 months? Or it's yes, only sir. 14 months just to Correct. get it back on track? Yes, sir. Motion for approval. Second. All right. Is there any uh, we have a motion and a second? Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Members opposed, like sign. The motion to <coughs> item nine, consideration of possible action to approve the facility use agreement between the City of Harlingen and the Arroyo Youth Soccer Club, Inc. for the use Harlem Soccer Complex to authorize the city manager to execute the agreement. How are we are? Yes, sir. Um, this is another um, uh, youth group that has approached us um, wanting to provide the, uh, their activities. And so this is also the same. It's for 14 months. Um, it'll begin in July and then end, uh, in September. There's only one change um, from what um, I originally had submitted um, at our Park Advisory Board. Um, the board had recommended to uh, change or amend the, uh, the agreement and to offer the um, Early Youth Soccer League uh, fields 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, and 10. And uh, if you all remember or recall, uh, field 7 is the one that we had uh, offered to um, the Toros. But they have not um, approached us or provided us, provided us with any documentation. <coughs> and the board felt that uh, it should be on a com first come, first served <coughs> basis. And so this is a reason that they've um, uh, proposed to add Field 7 to, to their agreement. That's right. All right. Anybody have any questions on this one? Is there, is there a motion to approve the agreement? So moved. Second. A motion of second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. The motion carries. <coughs> Out of 10. Thank you. Consideration of possible action to increase funding for the Boys and Girls Club of Harlingen in the amount of $50,000. Mayor, members of the commission, um, the Boys and Girls uh, Club currently receives $115,757 through their teen contract and they receive an additional $90,104 through the youth services contract. Uh, they approach the city about asking for an additional uh, $50,000 allocated to either contract or, or to uh, allocate half to each one. That would bring their total to $255,861. Now this money isn't budgeted, so if it's approved by the commission, we have to come back with the budget amendment to actually allocate for that. 
uh, that would be allocated to this year's contracts. Uh, I believe uh, Gerald Gathard is here to answer any questions you may have about uh, his reasoning for asking for the additional funding. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have for staff. Does anybody have any questions? I do. Oh, I have questions for him, but not. Go ahead. Yes. Here, Mr. Are y'all waiting to hear from me? Oh, you, you, I, I mean, I, have, I always got something to say, so. I had a question. Uh, um, I wanted to invite my uh, board chair, Ryan Newman, to come up. Uh, most of y'all probably know him, but to introduce him, and he's our incoming board chair. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to say some things about, you know, why we're requesting this and, and then answer any questions or however y'all would like me to proceed. Why well, a question real okay. quick. Do you, do you receive any funding from HISD? We are not, because of state law, we're not allowed to receive direct <coughs> funding from uh, ACISD, but we do on occasion receive funding for special programs uh, that they would not be able to provide. For instance, we've done special days for uh, special needs children which they've reimbursed us for. Uh, during, the, during the fall, we did some uh, remote uh, uh, education for about 150 kids a day and provided some additional funding uh, for that. But we do not receive much direct funding. However, three of our sites are on school district property and they provide the insurance, the upkeep, the uh, utilities, uh, overhead for those facilities. So when you were when you were the because I noticed on one of the documents we received when you guys served as a remote learning site with in, co in cooperation with HISD and that costed you guys about ten grand did they re they reimburse that no they did not they did not okay we we provided that as one of the things that we felt was important to contribute to our community during the uh, pandemic are you available to get COVID funds like we apply we got reimbursements do you, are you did you all apply or, or, or do you qualify to get COVID funds or reimbursement? For we're, funds? we're qualified to receive pass-through funds, which is another item we have on this uh, agenda also. So we're asking the city for some reimbursement help there. We are also asking the county, along with the other two boys and girls clubs which are in the county, we have a, a proposal in front of them. I don't know, we haven't heard back from them yet. Uh, and we are trying to talk to our school district to see if there's some things uh, that they could help us with. But there are absolutely no guarantees. So, so I guess the question I have was, and I think you kind of alluded to it, obviously you need more money, but you, you, this is just a portion of the money that you actually need. You, I mean, the overall pit, picture of the money you're asking for, for example, are you asking for $500,000 throughout the community and you're trying to get, and this is what you're asking the city to portion out into? Well, Commissioner, the, these funds in this particular request, we were already receiving uh, monthly allocations from the city of Harlingen. We're asking those to come up. The last increase we had of any kind was in 2007. Uh, and this program actually started in 2003 where the city started funding these things. So we have a, a history and we've kind of just always, we have towed the line, but uh, the cost of operating, along with all the challenges brought by COVID and, and everything that goes along with it, have made it uh, less tenable for us to, uh, to operate without getting some increases. We've also been hamstrung to a certain extent by <coughs> not being able to have uh, fundraising events for basically a year and a half, although we're turning the corner on that, we're going to reinitiate that. These funds are not so much about COVID, but it's about being able to continue to provide the operations we have historically as a partner of the city <coughs> through these two contracts. It's really not COVID related. It is, but it's not. But, or, but my question was, was, do you have an amount that you're asking? That, I mean, do you have a, I mean, obviously your board meets and, and, and you, you need X amount of dollars. Right. right. Do you have that number? Do you know what that is? What's your annual budget? Our annual budget is right at $1 million. Right. And so you've fallen short of that by 200,000, 300,000. My question is, uh, these, uh, this is one portion. I know there's another item coming up, right? But, right. But it's a simple question, right? I mean, you, you need $300,000, $400,000 to, to get back in black. Or get to, get, to get our budget back to that break-even status. So are we, the monies that you're asking us, is that just a portion of what you're asking for? And you're asking other entities, whether it's private donations or fundraising abilities, uh, um, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you, this is the only um, allocation you're asking? No, we're, 
we're knowing that our, our board is going to go back to raising funds, which they have been effective at doing. This is in addition, this is getting us, uh, keeping us at a normal stage. In other words, we're going to get back to normal. With, we're having our fundraising efforts. Our other funding sources are going to be secure, and, and we're going to be great. We had a couple of contributions during the pandemic year that sustained us. We're not getting those again. They were one-time gifts. So we have to come up with a long-term uh, solution to provide funds on an ongoing basis. That's what this uh, Okay, and, and so during the pandemic, to. how long were you all shut down for? We closed uh, March 17th, and we remained closed through the end of April. Our board of directors and, and our staff made a commitment to reopen because of so many kids that needed our, our services, the, the day in and day out kids. We reopened on, uh, at the beginning of May. We have been open uh, week by week since that time. We have not closed. We've not taken a vacation. We haven't shut down for anything uh, outside of the week where we had the freeze. We didn't actually get to shut down. We ended up turning into an emergency center for children who were uh, displaced from their homes due to, the, due to the freeze. So we ended up spending the week in uh, the Boys and Girls Club taking care of children. But we have been open ever since. We're open today. We will be open uh, for the summer until August the 13th. We'll take a short break to clean and repair, and we'll be back open again. Okay. And, and Dan, do you, do you know where, where uh, you pull the money from? Where? This would be from the general fund, sir. This would be a recurring <coughs> increase to their allocation. Uh, and they've always been a great community partner. Uh, so it's not a one-time draw. Th this 50000 is not a one-time. This would be a recurring increase. Which would bring the total to 165 Two, 255 861 uh, Combined total. Combined total. Is there a way we could do, like, about half of that? The, the, I think Gerald would be willing to take whatever the commission would, would allocate. Um, and so the answer to your question, I guess, would be best <clears throat> answered by Gerald. But I will tell you that... I know that he's looking to get funding from any source he can. Uh, the city is a consistent source of revenue for him that keeps these youth and teen service programs in operation. And so that's why he comes here. Uh, the fundraising, those aren't always a guarantee. No, I'm, I'm a big, my myself, I'm a big supporter of the Boys and Girls Club. I grew up on the Boys and Girls Club. I remember when he used to officiate some of our games in basketball. I still haven't forgiven some of the calls you made. But, um, yeah. Sir, there's a, there's a long line that doesn't uh, forgive the calls. Jeff, uh, it was a foul, and I still tell you it was a foul. Well, and I also kid, want to point out that, that we, we, me. we played <laughs> volleyball tournaments against Gerald, and we, we usually beat him. But I know that we have a great relationship. <laughs> I feel like I'm being condemned here. <laughs> Actually, I've been hearing that, Commissioner, quite a bit in recent weeks. Every time I run into somebody, you know, and whatever activity it was, I mailed off a package at a package store. Both the guys said, Mr. G, Mr. G, and I haven't seen you. You know, the kids that grew up in the club, the food service lady, kids everywhere. And of course, what it tells me is that we're having an impact because they're all gainfully employed. They're all family people. And people like yourself, professional people, and uh, so I'm, I'm actually grateful when I hear those things. Although you're still a young man, it kind of dates me a little bit, so I'm not so sure about it. I like that, but uh, I'm appreciative of those words. Mayor, if I, if I may, a real quick question, Mayor. Uh, Gabe, what did it cost us to run the teen service program back in the year when we had it? It was over. I, I don't. I don't have a dollar. Just under, under, under 300000 Yeah, we we gave. He's running the program for about maybe three quarters or half of what we were running it for. So we, we had a teen service program on, on I believe it was Van Buren, uh, at the old AV Chapa fire station. Yeah, there was about three employees that we had. So there. it cost us more money when we had it than when it was taken over by the Boys and Girls Club, no, I, I think, even at the 255. I, I think you did a fantastic job. Uh, that, uh, I think we, we moved that over in about 2001 or 2003. 2003, Mayor. I, and, I, think, I think you did a really, really yeah, good job. And that was, you know, I, I think that was a good decision because these are, uh, these are professionals. And as you know, uh, you, uh, you know, youth service, uh, youth services are difficult to, to, to deliver. There are a lot of safety issues involved and the Boys and Girls Club have always managed to, uh, to do these things in a very professional way and, and to raise up really great kids. And, and to help kids that are that are the most vulnerable in our community, 
So uh, this is, a, I think, this, this is a kind of a long overdue uh, increase uh, to, their, to their allocation. And, uh, and certainly in a year, like all nonprofit organizations have had after this year, but going forward, this would be a good investment. Uh, have you all finished with that building, or the, uh, the expansion? Thank you for asking, Commissioner. Uh, we have completed, 99% uh, completed the, the covered canopy, uh, which you all were excited about. We actually got to see a combined use this past weekend with the uh, uh, July 3rd, but for the 4th of July, uh, Freedom Fest. We had lots of people uh, came under there to sit in the bleachers we have there and to uh, rest and relax, we let some play basketball. We set up some inflatables and some different activities to kind of go along with the city's program. So we got a lot of comments uh, uh, about that uh, facility. There's a beautiful City of Harlingen recognition sign in that uh, uh, part. It is, it is completed, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, we've also redesigned and rebuilt the skate park that we built in cooperation with the city several years ago, actually moved it to the other side of our property. That is completed. The gym, the frame on the gymnasium is now up. Uh, we're getting ready to do the uh, block work, the interior block work. So uh, I'm thinking of three to four months till we complete that. And it's on budget? And, uh... It's on budget and fully funded. Uh, because the cost of materials has gone up so much, and I'm just wondering... You know, if that if you took a hit on that or not? Yeah, we we've done well. Uh, you know, we raised some additional we raised some additional funds through foundations. Uh, we we've been hard at work on that. Uh, we believe that the Valley Baptist Legacy Foundation may give us some additional funds. Uh, we were blessed in that pursuit. You know, people believed in that, liked the idea of the whole project. Uh, one thing that was added to it, and we have it funded also uh, for the most part. Uh, during the freeze, uh, many people obviously lost their power, and uh, I was very content in my home. Uh, my, every, my power was great. It was a little bit toasty in there. It was great. Unfortunately, some children from our club called my dear wife, and uh, uh, she informed me that we would be taking some kids, not in our home, but into our main boys and girls club, which maintained power. A few kids became, uh, I believe, 60. And uh, so we actually had a kind of a summer camp during the February freeze, and we fed uh, through gifts from God is all I can say. It was amazing how we were able to feed all these kids, take care of them, and protect them for four days during that time. Mm -hmm. But it also revealed a, a problem our board of directors knew, that we had HVAC problems, air conditioning problems. And so we made a commitment to try to fix that once and for all while we're in this building phase. A local contractor, uh, agreed to donate the equipment to replace all the air conditioning and heating in our buildings, everything, and the labor to do it. Uh, we're paying a small part of the, the actual equipment. A $175,000 job is going to end up costing us forty to $50,000. So we added that to our building project. It is funded also. All of our building projects are funded. Well, I, I just, you know, uh, just task you with finding the money and being able to going forward and we're going through our budget cycle already ready for the following year yeah because you scared us on the budget this this afternoon um, we, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll figure it out we'll figure it out somehow <laughs> okay so i'd like the motion for an approval mayor second all right any other discussion all would, thank you joe for everything you do yeah i would just like to say on behalf of the board how much we appreciate the the support from the city not only past but <clears> certainly <throat> present and, and into the future so thank you guys so much yeah. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed like sign. Motion carries. Item 11, consideration of possible action to approve, uh, to provide a one-time allocation funding in the amount of $100,000 to the Boys and Girls Club of Harleston for their COVID-19 response services. Um, Mayor, members of the commission, uh, the reason these are two separate items was because the first was an adjustment to their contract. Uh, this second item is strictly COVID related and as a, as a result of winter storm uh, URI, um, in your packet is a, a, a list of activities that uh, the Boys and Girls Club have provided during the pandemic and also during winter storm URI. So what they were asking for is uh, a one-time allocation uh, to the club 
uh, in the amount of $100,000. Uh, they had asked for uh, an allocation from the city's allocation that we received from the federal government, but all those funds have been expended uh, through commission action. So if we were to fund anything uh, to the club for these expenses, it would also have to come from general fund. But, this would, but this would just be a one-time allocation. I had a question, because I remember, it, uh, I forgot what board it is, it's not the 4B board, but the other board, the Community Improvement Board, I'm, I'm assuming, where we got the fire truck, the CDBG. brush truck. Oh, that's CDBG. Yeah, didn't they, didn't they get $60,000 from that they, as well? Or how does that they, work? They received money from HUD uh, because of the pandemic, but it was only for mortgage and rental assistance and for utility payments. So none of these projects would, would qualify. Uh, and they were also for low to moderate income people only. Because I can see giving the fifty thousand dollars because I think like you you said you hadn't been, you hadn't changed you hadn't been got an increase with since when two thousand seven I believe yes sir so that's that's go for it I mean you guys deserve it your the impact you guys have on the community is incredible but at the same time asking us to pay an additional hundred thousand dollars I think that's a lot because now we're really really digging into mm. the general fund this would come from the uh, American Rescue Plan funding. But hasn't that already been set aside for so, some of the drainage? So the, re stuff? the revenue recapture that we did and transfer it back over to the general fund, even those funds have to be used for qualified expenses. Uh, one of the um, eligible expenses is to assist nonprofits. So this would be the pass through. So yeah, this would be this could this would qualify for this hundred thousand dollars, even though we call it a general fund. It's actually in a separate account mm -hmm. uh, because we have to track and utilize those funds for eligible expenses, like drainage, like water improvements, those type of uh, uh, infrastructure improvements, but also nonprofits are part of the qualified uses of the funds. I just want to bring that up for the City Council's information. Yeah, that, that was a question I had with what, why, if you were able to get reimbursement, but you're not, so we, we use that as a pass-through. Yeah, so he, be the pass he, he, he wasn't able to because we, couldn't, right? we have the money and one of the qualifiers for us is that you can use it for nonprofits. Okay. Now, I hope I don't, we don't have a line of nonprofits showing up at the next meeting, <laughs> but, uh, but it is an eligible use. Doesn't mean that that's what has to be used for, it's just a qualified use. So that money hadn't been allocated already? No, so we just moved it over and we set it down in the account. So we're gonna have to, as we go through the next year or so, uh, we're gonna <coughs> probably dump it all into drainage, to be honest with you. The majority of it. What, what we don't use. Well, so I think there are two we, issues we, we here. One, is, one, one was the, the issue that you all that you already passed on, and that's in, to to give them an increase in their in We'd their annual uh, contracts with us. I think that was certainly a good decision. I think this addresses specifically kind of the shortfalls that so many nonprofit. And I, and, uh, I mean, I try to raise money for other organizations during the pandemic and it was very, uh, I feel your pain. I, it was very, very difficult uh, to do, uh, especially especially in, uh, in the spring of 2020 when everybody, when there was a, a, a whole lot of uncertainty about what was going on. And and these, you know, you couldn't hold fundraisers and you couldn't have events and people were trying to do them virtually and some of them were successful and some of them were not. I think this, $100,000 really is there to try to address uh, the difficulty in, in having raised money, uh, raising money for this nonprofit during that, that time period. Well, I just so think I'm, it's also a blessing that you're able to stay open during the freeze when there was so much uncertainty with, the, you know, and there was people sleeping in their cars. And I, I couldn't figure out why there was such a long gas line. Well, people sleep in their cars because they had no heat in home, in the homes, and that was, that was, really, that was really surreal. But to be able to provide that kind of support for the families at that time, that was that's, that's pretty. Uh, well, and during COVID, I believe he passed out uh, gift cards to families for groceries. Right. Actually, these funds that we're requesting are for things outside of our normal scope. I mean, we looked internally and said we need to do some things that we haven't normally done to help our community. Uh, so we've given out probably ten thousand dollars in gift cards to young people and to their families that were in. Uh, very troubling situations, you know, people living in public housing, uh, people living in uh, very low income areas, uh, at a time where they weren't getting extra benefits from the government, they needed help, and, and, and so our board agreed, we're gonna help our people. 
And uh, well, so you, we did you, things like that also. You knock on a door maybe once a year, and I, I, I believe your door gets knocked on almost every day, right? That's pretty much sums it up. We get a few requests, you know, <laughs> and, and we, we try to honor them. I mean, that's, that's, why we ex that's why we exist. But these are for funds that were above, the, you know, providing the remote learning. We basically put our staff at our expense to work all day long and then come back and be there after school for kids so that we could help, uh, you know, children that could not go to school and could not function at home. You know, we all know the pandemic created so many crazy situations. I know, Commissioner, you're an educator. I'm sure you saw plenty of these situations, you know, just kids could not function. So it's, it's kind of an ongoing thing. Uh, but but this the emergency going... shelter and, and uh, uh, you know, things like that, that's what these funds are, are uh, helping to reimburse us for. They're not really for uh, ongoing. It's for money that we spent out of the ordinary. I like the motion for an approval. Second. Motion to second any other discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like so the motion carries. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank, Thank you again. Appreciate it very much. We're honored. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. So just have Item 12, there. consideration of possible <coughs> action to approve a resolution <coughs> by the City Commission to execute an agreement with the Texas Division of Emergency Management for funding at the 21st Street Storm Service <coughs> Project System 007 and to authorize the city manager to represent the city of Arlington and execute all documents in connection with the funding agreement. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, this item before you tonight is in regards to the 21st Street uh, Storm Sewer Im Improvement Project. Um, so uh, this project is, is located on 21st Street uh, between the limits of Austin, uh, the drainage ditch, and Van Buren, uh, and it will uh, reduce losses to, to flooding and uh, uh, losses to life and, and flooding. So um, the total estimated project cost is $2,483,230.38. Um, which includes both a design phase and construction phase. Uh, the federal match for this project would be 48.2% or $1,197,563.64 and the local match for this project would be 58, 50, excuse me, 52.8% uh, for a total of $1,285,666.74. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. We touched on this project during the workshop. This is the one that had run over on cost, and so we're going to have to allocate another $886,000 to it. That would make up the difference to the $1.285 million, and staff is recommending we move forward with it. And that will be out of this year's budget, not next year's. Well, we have some design work to do, so okay. the construction phase will probably be next fiscal year. And, and that's when we will spend and, this but money. But we will utilize the American Rescue Plan funds, the $6 million that we've set aside in the special account to cover this difference. <coughs> a motion to approve? Second. Okay, we have a motion to second. Any aye. other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. The motion carries. Thank you. Item 13, consideration of <coughs> possible action. To authorize the city's MIS department to transfer the mobile services from AT&T to T-Mobile and take advantage of the Connecting Heroes promotion for a zero cost for all first responders and $10 for all others and save over $5,000 per month. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, and Manager. Uh, city has been approached by uh, T-Mobile. Uh, they uh, presented a uh, promotion, Connecting Heroes. Uh, this is a promotion that will cost zero dollars for fire and police users and ten dollars for all other users. Uh, rejected new bill will be eighteen twenty six a month. Current bill is seventy eight forty eight. Uh, it's an estimated savings per month of six thousand six thousand and twenty two dollars, uh, seventy two thousand dollars a year. Staff is recommending approval. And Timo Rep is here for any questions. Did you did you get a hold of Verizon? Because <laughs> um, Verizon was offering the same, oh, but no. also with giving you phones. Because I understand this does not include phones. No. So as as we replace phones, we have to 
buy the phones. Sure. And I asked Dan to look into that because, uh, or Carlos, I don't know which one I talked to. I think it was Carlos. Carlos. Verizon's offering us, the, all the carriers are kind of offering the same thing. They're all kind of competing and stuff. Now, I, I had a question about AT&T services because I, I understand that's the best service for our, our, our police department. Uh, and and, and we, we were talking the other day and our phones are starting to drop calls and, and we're starting having all kinds of issues uh, uh, with T-Mobile. With but, but more importantly is, if, did we shop it out and, 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 and go and, and- No, this is something that they came in and approached us. I understand, we, we, we but, but the right thing to do, in my opinion, like mm -hmm. I told Carlos, was shop it out. Hey, you have his proposal, uh, uh, but there's other offers out there that are equally the same or better. And if yeah. we can get the same type of savings, which I, I love the savings, yeah. but also get new phones, why wouldn't we get everybody new phones? Yeah, I did approach at and gave me the chance to Carter uh, offer, but... Uh, no, no, I'm talking about Verizon. Verizon, because no. Verizon has the same program. No, but... And uh, Verizon's uh, uh, another, what I understood, a stronger carrier in this region, right? Yeah, we can do that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but that's what I, I thought we were doing. And I, I have an email from Carlos saying that I thought that we were doing. I was surprised to see this on the agenda. <clears throat> We can we, 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 we can certainly table it, Commissioner. So and go, I, I, sure. I would like to I'd yeah. like to instruct the MIS department just to go out for proposal or to, to make sure we check all the carriers, give them all the opportunity, uh, because again, uh, the, everybody's everybody's uh, most of them are offering the same kind of free service for the police, and it's some kind of government program or something. That's great, but why not pit them against each other? And if they're able to, if we're able to again leverage that and get new phones for everybody. That's a, that's a that's another savings account because they're about what six hundred seven hundred dollars on average. Yeah, an average yes. it depends on the and model. We have how many employees? Maybe two hundred. Uh, we're using two hundred and five devices. Yes. So so to not have to buy another two hundred phones at least for another year or two years would would be another real life savings. So I'd like to see that and and then you know if 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 uh, this company is the right one to go with then we'll go with that but give everybody the opportunity to bid on that. Sure, we can do that. So, motion to table. And I just want to uh, ver make sure T-Mobile is not offering us any phones. No. Okay. Uh, the current devices will, will stay in place, same numbers. We're just going to switch SIM cards. So we have a motion and a second. To table. All right. We have a motion and a second to table. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Like sign. Item is tabled. Out of 14, discussion of consideration of possible action to amend the city charter to change the appointment method of the Harlan Airport Board. Oh, okay. Yes, um, I, what I want to, well, what I want to do is right now, at the, at the way it states right now, um, all the members from the airport board, from my understanding from reading the charter, they're appointed by the mayor. Um, what I want to do is I want to make it just like the water, the Waterworks Board or any of the other boards that we have where we would, each of the person on the city commission would get a choice on the airport board, um, and the mayor too. The mayor would still be representative, but I think this would add more diversity and also more of a representation through the commission instead of right now where it's at, where we do get to approve or deny the picks, but we don't actually get to choose. And I think this would be a better way of doing that. So what I want to do with this is propose it, put it on the ballot, because that's the only way to change from what I understand the charter. That's right. And we do by doing that, you know, give a little bit more representation to the people of Harlinger and not just leave this for one person decides this entire board. Because I believe the airport board's are important and it deserves more of just our approval or denial. We should be able to choose as well. And I move to do that. Second. All right. Um, is there any discussion? The, the way, here, here's, the, here's the concern that I have about that. And, and uh, when, I, I wasn't actually part of the Charter Review Committee, but when the Charter Review Committee came up with this scheme uh, prior to my time, the, it, this was basically a compromise because the mayor does, does not have any appointments to the Economic Development Corporation Board or to the Waterworks. He has appointments to, to virtually every other, so there are three that are sort of a different animal, the EDC, the Waterworks, and the Airport Board. So the compromise was let the commission appoint 10 members, five and five, five to the EDC and five to the utility board. And then the, or rather the commission would appoint, appoint those. And then the mayor appoints nine members of the, uh, what, what is now nine members of the airport board. So, uh, it, it, you know, if you're, if you're going to change it, 
And uh, here's when we start changing the charter, we need to we need to look at other parts of the charter to make sure you know, to see what we're doing because uh, you know the mayor now is the only is, is is the only member of the commission that is elected at large, uh, but you know it doesn't have a vote except in, in, the, in the case of a tie. So uh, um, yet you know so somebody who gets you know. 70% of the vote, say, in the last three elections, uh, doesn't have doesn't have a vote, and uh, but uh, so there there are some other things that are that are uh, that were allotted uh, to the mayor. This was the, one of the few in the charter to to allow to allow him to make appointments. So I would, uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna change the method of the airport board appointments. I think you should also change the method of the appointments to the EDC and the Waterworks Board and allow the mayor to have appointments to the EDC and the Waterworks Board. Yeah, I agree with the mayor on that. If, if uh, we can look at the charter and giving him the opportunity to, to make those appointments as well. But don't, don't, aren't you on the board, like an official member on the board? Like an official, I know you don't have voting power. But he doesn't appoint board. anybody. Yeah, I know, but no. you're part of the Waterworks Board. We're ex officio, uh, the city manager and I are ex officio members. Mm -hmm. Not, uh, so you, actually, every member of the commission is an ex officio member of the EDC, <laughs> but the, the city, so all of you are ex officio <coughs> members of the EDC. Do you know when uh, this? Including members of the Chamber of Commerce. And, 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 but, uh, but as far as the Waterworks and the Airport Board, uh, the, the mayor and the city manager are ex officio members, which means they don't have a vote. Do, do we have a, uh, the charter review that came up with this? Mechanism, do we know how long ago they, that was? Yeah, well, I would go to move it where we move, where we put. Uh, if you want to go that far, you want to. Why don't we just do it for all the boards? Make them all concurrent. Make it where each commissioner has one um, pick, and including the mayor as well. Because well, right now the the airport board, I don't believe, and the waterworks board, and I believe the EDC, they're not concurrent. Well, they're appointed. You, you have to. You don't have to decide how to apportion them, right? Because they're nine, and they're only they're only six of us. Right. So who gets more than? Who gets more than one? We'll go by weight. And then the same thing with the city. With the, if you did something to change the EDC and the, and the, <coughs> and the utility board, uh, there are five, which fits nicely with the five commissioners. But if the mayor makes an appointment, and you end up with six members, which is a even number, and that's Maybe not you a add and delete. You need a you need an odd number uh, in order to break in order to break ties. So, uh, well, how about what I would what I would suggest to you. You know, do whatever you do, what you want to do, with regard to this. I don't. This is something I don't feel like is broken. Uh, you know, the, the airport's doing pretty good. Three new airlines in the last uh, two years. Uh, runway extension project going full speed ahead. Uh, the airport got more than uh, more grant money pre-pandemic than any other airport in the state of Texas, other than DFW. We got the most CARES grant money than any airport in South Texas, $20 million, which is by far more than what Brownsville and McAllen got. And uh, uh, we have a perfect FAA score last month. So, I mean, I think things are in pretty good shape over at the airport. Well, then I, I would agree with what you're saying, but then how about we go ahead and move with moving, with changing the appointment of the airport board right now, and then in the next meeting, if you like, because I know you can point stuff, you, can, you yourself can put stuff on the agenda, so you can, you can put that about the EDC and on the Waterworks board, but right now we go ahead and go with this, because if we're just waiting for all of them at once, that's just going to waste time. So we can go ahead and move to move to put this resolution on, on or to amend the charter where we ch make this change to the appointments how they do the airport board and then the next time we'll come back to the waterworks board and we'll come back to the EDC whichever you choose. Can, can I ask how, how would that work because that has to go to the voters? Yes. Yeah that's right I mean this this would have to come back in the form of an ordinance yeah. for the commission to vote on anyway so uh, today I guess you're just talking about what it is you want to do and what it is you want to see come back to you in the form of an ordinance, if anything. So why don't you make the motion so we can, I, I, I think it would speed things up if we're gonna, like the mayor says, gonna redo everything, put everything on, on one, so they bring it back as one, and we don't have, 
That's, <laughs> yeah, that, election time. Yeah, but that would delay everything. That's the whole point that so I'm Oh, yeah, just give them direction. They can, they can give you an option. Because from what I mean, it, it, it can't happen until the next election oh, anyway. I understand that. Yeah, that I understand until May 5th. That I understand. But I want to get the process rolling. Because a lot of times what I've noticed, this is one thing that I've noticed a lot of the the way things work in the city is delay, 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 and let's do that delay, delay, and just get it done. We'll get it done, and then we'll come back exactly what you want to do. We'll come back and do it. So we'll do this one, we'll do it. Well, We're not you, Richard, but you know what I mean, what you're suggesting with the first That's what I mean. If, if we not made, if, can, we, can we get together like a, a, a packet of some of the options that we can use? Like, who, is there a charter review board right now? Not right now. Okay. Um, that, but that's an option you can entertain at another meeting if you want to appoint a committee. That would delay it even more. That, well, that, that's what I had suggested to you at one time because you had a handful of different things which would have to be measures that would go to the voters. There's only term limits, but and I assume. And said, you know, usually a charter committee vets all those different things. Yeah, but that's things. just but more. But, you but, but, it, but, it, but if, we, if we as a commission appoint a committee and we can put some you know, really smart people on that committee. I'm that, smart. I know you're smart. Well, yeah, We're but, smart. but uh, I'm also not the smartest one in the room either. Right? Uh, to get, two to, to get the right input from the right people, right? Um, the, the people that are going to be making the decision are the, ultimately we're not the ones going to be making. That's what I'm trying to explain. Ultimately, we are not the ones going to make a decision. It's going to be the, the, the people of Harlingen. They're the ones that are going to be voting yes, for it. But, but how we present it and put the package together, I, I, I think I would like to get input from the community. <coughs> the, the, if, you want, if, if you want to move forward with this, you, you're going to have to ask the city attorney to come back with some sort of an ordinance yes, anyway. Yes, that I understand. In a specific <coughs> form. form. Uh, all I'm asking you to do is if you're going to change the airport board, you ought to change the EDC and the waterworks and let them put that in there as an option. Then you can decide whether to accept it or not. <coughs> just let them work on it. Just let them work on it. Give them, just tell them that that's can you the get direction something? that you want them to yeah. take. Yeah. Why don't we just do we that? We can write it up. We can write it up and give you something. Some kind of presentation for the next. Because I, I would like to see that option as far as, put, and I know you, you may not want to, but, but that we have a choice on putting the committee together to discuss the number of number of, of people that are representative in, in, in all the boards. And I, 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 I can agree with that. But I'd like to get feedback from the committee. And with, with the option at some point or another where we would pick the, the committee members for, for right. the charter review. Yeah, we can all yeah, have so if, many committee if, members you appoint. And would this be if somebody wants to bring that forward, they can. Yeah. And then that's when you choose the committee. But that has to happen at a, at a different meeting no, because it's yes, not on the agenda. OK, so that's just delay again. I'm okay with if you guys want to do it the way you want it. I'm fine with that. We'll get it all in one. You can, you can come back next meeting with an ordinance, right? That's, so so all the the next commission. Got to come back anyway. Do you feel like you have enough direction based on the conversation? I have enough direction for the one item that's on, which is the airport board. All right. That's it. Uh, but, I, so I, we I, can I, ask to, to I, review. I have the a question. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, you, you mentioned you wanted an airport board that had diversity. So what does diversity mean, and why is this current board non-diversified? Because when I mean by diversity, I mean more than just the choices of just one person. As of right now, the airport board is basically just the mayor. He, has, he appoints everybody on there. I think it needs to be more representative where each of us can choose someone from there. That's what I mean So, So you, you want to neuter this mayor and future mayors? I want to neuter? Yes. No, not necessarily. But the thing is, remember, the mayor is not a voting member on the commission. He presides over the commission, but he doesn't vote on it. So in, in if, if you want to go that route, he's already neutered to begin with. And you want to make him more so? No, I want to make it more representative. I want it to have each of the city commissioners have a voice in it. What's wrong with giving each city commissioner a voice? I don't understand why you'd be against that. I didn't say I was against it. And this doesn't mean that we can't <clears throat> reappoint the current yes, board exactly. members to begin with. So just... I just want to have a voice in that in that board. That's what. I, and right now, I don't feel that need, none of us on this commission really have a voice to appoint someone on that, which we don't. So with that, we can write up some proposed draft <laughs> language for you on this, and we can present it, and we can go over it what it would look like. And, and that would you be have other the next points commission. you want to add to that? We can do that too. Okay. So but what what would be the time frame for that? Would it be the next commission meeting? Because I don't want something to be dragging on, dragging on. It's already like. February of next year, and we're barely working on this or putting it. And I understand it doesn't go until May. I understand that. 
but I know there are some, there are some, you know, I want to get this done. In other the words, I don't want to be dragging. is the 21st, I believe? Yes. 21st. 21st. Two weeks from today. Can we get today. an ordinance done? All right. Is, is, we can get an ordinance done. Is there any, the is there any other discussion? No. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Opposed. All right, motion carries. Item 15, discussion and consideration of possible action to amend the Arlington City Charter to create term limits with the city commissioners and the mayor. Yes. Commissioner uh, Pettis and Commissioner Puente. Yes, this is something else. This is uh, something I know that I brought up before the commission, and I strongly believe that we need term limits um, on the commission. And I know some people try to put it as, oh, this is, we're going after the mayor on this one. And if we were to even do this, the term limits, which I'm hoping we can do, it wouldn't even affect uh, Mayor Boswell. It wouldn't probably go into effect till probably the next election when I run for re-election. So it wouldn't, he would, and these previous terms wouldn't even go count toward him. I just want to have term limits for our elected officials. McAllen has it, Bronzeville has it. And remember, this is not the city commission saying, hey, we're going to put term limits and we're going to have it. No, this is just us giving the people of Harlingen the, the choice to make the same decision that the people of Bronzeville and McAllen did. And, this, and I don't <coughs> understand why anybody would be against term limits because this, it's, I mean, term limits is, a, in my opinion, again, this is my opinion, it's a good thing because it, um, it brings fresh ideas um, to, the, to the elected offices, plus it prevents a lot of cronyism. I mean, that's what I honestly believe. Okay, sir, but, but don't you think that um, there's something to be said about stability or being stable? I know that when I came on the commission, uh, it took me it took me a little bit to understand how just how everything works. It's such a large operation, right? And there's so many different departments, so many different levels. <coughs> just how meetings are conducted, what you know, the proper steps to do certain things. And I know I wanted, you know, I came in. I wanted it, that takes a while. Yeah, that's why I'm proposing and, 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 like nine uh, years. And so then at the last meeting, there was one caller, whoever the caller was, on citizen communication, brought up a good point. What happens? What happens when you have a really good uh, person that's serving? Because it's hard to find board appointments, finding somebody that, that, that'll show up to meetings and, and do things the right way. Find people that want to volunteer to do this. We don't get paid to do this, right? What happens we, when, when that pool runs dry? And maybe not, not now, maybe five years from now, but you don't have any more. Um, I, I, I'm sorry, but I don't agree with that. I don't think that well will ever be dry, that there, you won't find people that are in the community that care about this community and want so, to do something so, about this so community. So when, when, because I, I, I think that. And remember, the, this is, Richard, remember, this is not us putting term limits. This is all I want and all I'm asking is for us to let the people of Harlingen decide. Right. Let them decide. We're trying to, because what you're saying is like, that's not even give them the option. No, let, get, let give the people of Harlingen an option. Let them decide for themselves, hey, do we want term limits or not? That's the only thing I'm asking. We're not putting it. The people of Harlingen because, will decide themselves. Because the, especially us that we're by district, if, if my constituents in my neighborhood are unhappy with me, they're going to vote me out. But the I, thing is, I mean, that, that's, 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 that's an argument that's always used against term limits. But the thing is, incumbency has its benefits. Look at the mayor, perfect example with the mayor. He ran the last election. He mentioned right now that he got 70% of the vote. And I'm not saying you haven't done, been doing a good job or anything, but I'm saying he's been mayor for what? Since 2007? 15 years. 2009? 2007. Seven? Okay, so he's been there for a long time. So that comes with a lot of, and I'm, again, not saying he's not, but that comes with a lot of people know him, people with recognition and all this other stuff. And that has its benefits. People, oh, Boswell, hey, I know Boswell, yeah, go for it, Boswell. And then you have some other guy that came like last time, the last election. I think he was working at a. At a, um, at a nursing home or something like that, right? I'm assuming, something like that. And this guy, nobody knew and stuff. So you're getting the name of Boswell here in Harlingen, which everybody knows. And then you're getting this other guy. There's not gonna be any competition. It's been shown over and over again that when you're incumbent, you have benefits of it. And that, that's why we keep on having it. It's on a city level, on a state level, on a federal I, I, I level. Think, I think, uh, well, I, I think we have some uh, people that signed up for citizen communication, so yes, I guess we should go ahead and call them. <coughs> um, Mayor, Mayor Lozano, if you'd like, if you'd like to come, uh, come on up. If, you, if you'd like to speak on this item, item 15. Welcome, sir. Glad to have you here. Sam Lozano or Samuel Lozano. I um, was a little concerned about a um, episode that happened. Um, I <clears throat> was not going to run for 
a mayor for a third term. And I made it known, however, um, I thought it was coming up to the people to decide how many terms an individual could serve. Well, it, they went ahead on their own, or the commission passed an ordinance that I could not run for mayor a third term, which I had made it clear that I would not. Okay, so that was called a, a, a Lozano ordinance, you know, which prohibit me from running for mayor a third term, which is, he have a friend Chris here, I don't know how many terms he served, and he would think they would go to the people to decide how many terms an individual could serve. However, it was down in house, and and that was my concern. If you if he was really uh, uh, done, but but by the by the commission and not the people. Now I think that there's someone is proposing that there's only be that the mayor run for two terms and that's it, and. And I think it, that you, Frank, uh, were proposing that, or who was proposing that? That, that the mayor just had, uh, run for two terms no. consecutively, or what? No, no, no. All, all I wanted was. Beg your pardon? Kind of, all I wanted was kind of like a, a presentation from the attorneys to come back with some of the options that the pros and cons of. of well, right now, term limits. right now, what I'm looking at is three two year, are up, mayor. three terms for three three year terms. That would be ideal. Um, and that would not be um, retro. It would not be like it would not be. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Retroactive. Retroactive. So in other words, um, like say for example, um, Commissioner Uribe and Commissioner Puente, when they're running in um, May of next year, the terms that they've served previously wouldn't count against that. It wouldn't be until the next election when we would have in what 2024. Yeah. Well, I, I, I agree, but I think it should go to the people. How many terms an individual? However, it was done in house. You know, I was asking I could not run again, and I wasn't going to run again, but for them to, to pass an ordinance amongst the members there, I, I, I did not appreciate that. that. And that, <clears throat> in fact, this is why I'm here, you know, that there was an ordin Lozano ordinance which prohibited me to run a third term, which I was not going to run. But here, here Chris, I don't know how many terms he served. And it was done in-house, but I think it should have gone to the people to decide how many times an individual could run for, for a mayor. I'm not talking about commission. I'm talking about the mayor. So Wayne, what is, what is the proposal the amongst you, or, or, or has that been decided in-house already? We're still working on that. May I ask but, the beg your pardon? And yes. have we ever had uh, term limits in place, or the harness has always been? Um... Not, not, not that I'm aware of, but other people here would know better. I doubt it. An ordinance was passed that I could not run for a third term as mayor. Uh, on an I, ordinance, sir? I, I don't know. I can um, get with the city secretary well, and see if there was an ordinance, but we're talking about a charter well, amendment here. So oh, here's the mayor the himself. Uh, evidently, it was done in house and not, and it didn't go to the people to decide how many terms an individual could run. So, yeah. I hope so I, that. My, my question is we'll, we'll write it up as far as pros and cons. That's y'all's discussion, not ours. You just need to tell me do you how many terms you want or the direction and are they is it perspective only yeah so and what do you guys we'll think i didn't i didn't have no, any think, years in particular i just wanted just no, some feedback the, it's going the decision is going to be up to us i, I well, think the mayor yeah. i think the mayor is asking uh, if, I'm, if i'm correct mayor what you're asking is what is what is the specific proposal on the term limits is that right that is correct and okay. uh, so whether just, and, it should yeah. be done by in-house or by and I think uh, Mr. Puente is saying that uh, he'd like uh, to see some options uh, prepared by the city attorney's office. Or uh, we could just... Biggest, like Brownsville did it one way, McAllen did it yeah. the other right. way. Well, they are. Or we could just do it, uh, talk about it the way we do right now. And like I said, we have options. It's three-year terms. That's what we have right now. 
So we can, again, this is not something where the mayor and commissioner would be separate, it would be all the same. What goes for commission goes for the mayor. So we could do three years, because I understand what you're saying, there's a learning curve. Okay, I agree with that. We can maybe do uh, three terms, that'd be nine years. I mean, but, but that'd be good for them. Don't you think you want to see what other other cities throughout the state, or maybe throughout the what what they do? <coughs> I've already because looked at that. <coughs> Sorry? Well, yeah, I, but but I haven't seen it. Right. You know, I, I would I, like to. I, it's, it's. I would like to see. Richard, it's been on the agenda, dude. Like. No, 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 no. That, no. What I'm what I'm talking about, I would like to see. Hey, this is what McAllen does. This is what Austin does. This is what San Antonio does. Uh, the mayor alluded to 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 uh, what Brownsville does. Okay, Brownsville, I understand uh, the mayor. They have a mayor at large, then you have two commissioners at large, right? And then then they have so many commissioners. So if you want to change all that, then that's something to look at. As I, well. don't want to get, no, I don't want to. No, I don't want to do that. But you want to let the people decide. Give yes. Them the, give them the best options, but right? The, and give them all the options. Not not something that that you've thought up. Of. I, I said, let's look at what everybody else is doing. Because, because obviously it's already in place and they're, again, there's pros and cons to doing it. But if you want to look at that, like I said, uh, why not, then why not, let's look at that option too. Saying, you know what, we have two, two commissioners at large that, can, that, that are voted by all the city. We already had that. That's why we went to single member district. Well, That's again, we that I have, but I haven't seen that history. You may have done the that The people research. voted for that. That's I'm why sorry. we have, the people okay, voted okay. for that already. Mayor, Mayor I, I, want like to, I want to thank you for your comments <laughs> and I think we should go on to the next uh, person who has well what what, what action um, uh, is required here I mean it, it, sir the, the mayor can run as many times as, as as he wants or, or is it elected or what what position uh, has the Commission taken that's all I want to know all right thank you thank you May I go, um, uh, Mayor Boswell? Thank you. Rather than engage in double speak, you heard distinctly from Mr. Novato that he's ignorant of whether or not the uncomforting posture my dad just finished stating that there may be an ordinance that prohibits a Harlingen mayor from serving more than two consecutive terms. And um, Inadvertently, you stopped, you stepped into the caliber of person one is. And, and it's not just one person. Just because one person is not educated on the premier political football issue of this nation for the last 25 years, there are reams of documents on how this is going. So on balance, when one weighs the pros and cons of term limits as a proposed item is placed, and it's changing by the minute by one of those people that I say get engages in double speak. Two terms. That's what Mr. Pettis, someone that is Fort Wright, is suggesting. That's not prohibiting a great person like Richard from re-emerging in his political career. He might have to sit out for some breath of fresh air. It might be stale air. And that may be your campaign issue. I stepped out. Staleness and poor leadership developed. A precedent was developed in the Lozano Ordinance. If we had capable attorneys, which I don't think we do at the present, they would know. He doesn't show up too often, and he's unprepared. Thank you. All right. Do we have another individual who signed up? Yes, Mayor Francisco Lozano, but I don't know if he's present. He wants uh, to be called. Call okay. Francisco Lozano, this is Amanda Lizondo. You um, signed up to speak under Citizens Communication. You have two minutes and you may start <coughs> now. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I believe I'm speaking in regards to the agenda item of term limits. <coughs> and in that regard, I'd like to speak in favor of those term limits given that. Um, I believe it would serve our community best if we had 
limitations on the amount of time that an individual can serve so that no person could place their own personal profit above that of the city's well-being. And as for the detractors, who might state that institutional knowledge would be lost if term limits were established, I would say that I'm not entirely convinced the institutional knowledge that the current uh, occupants of office in the city have accumulated is worthy of preserving. I believe the fresh ideas and fresh blood would be good for Harlingen and that in order to bring uh, build a more stronger community in in our city and in our portion part of the state and county that we need strong term limits in place in order to foster better development and better opportunity for all thank you thank you all right thank you uh, so yeah. I, I wanted to add because I know you were asking Richard about the um, term limits that McAllen did and what McAllen has um, they on their charter amendment that they just passed um, they limited the mayor and the commissioner to three four-year terms but it also comes with a caveat where a term served as a commissioner wouldn't count against the mayor um, so that's the one for McAllen and I can look for the one in Bronzeville I just don't want to the whole thing of this is I don't want to I don't want to delay we're always delaying this term limit issue I brought it uh, across the Commission before and we've talked to the, about it before in the Executive Commission and this is something I feel very strongly about this is something that I mean the way I see it if it's good enough for the President of the United States it's good enough for McAllen it's good enough for Bronzeville why isn't it good enough for Harlingen and then asking like all these options and stuff like that the ultimate option for the for this for the um, for the residents of Harlingen is going to be should we have term limits or not but I understand what you're saying about like but let's give them all these options. Give them a clear. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Option. That's what I'm trying to settle right, right now. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to settle right, right now. Exactly. We can do three, three, three-year terms. We can do four, three-year terms. Not, in my opinion, you, you can't make such an important decision tonight. Now, one Why? Conversation. That's what we're here for. Why? Yeah. No, we're because, always delaying everything. You, you Nothing gets done because we delay. Want to make an informed decision, right? You want to make sure that everybody, when you when you make decisions, man, especially when you're running stuff, in my opinion. I like to hear from every single person, from 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 my top level manager to the mainest guy on the floor. I want to hear everything because you can learn a lot from people, right? And 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 listen, and that's what you should be doing with the community. Now you represent, you we're re we're voted by 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 district, but we represent the whole city, right? And so you got to give the citizens of Harlingen the best pop possible options to not make such a quick decision like then, because because you know, your mind's going 100 miles an hour. Hold on, let me finish. So so what is the what is the problem? You as an educator. Right, you're an educator. When you prepare your, your lesson plans and stuff, or you're doing them all right off the bat, or you're going to go give the kids the best possible presentation you can and doing your research. And that's all I'm asking to do. We're not going to we're going to we're not going to solve that tonight. We we give them direction and and and, and come back with options. The thing and then is, we as a commission will decide what's going to go on that ballot. The thing is, we could have done that last time. I last time I suggested it, and you could have we could have done that. You didn't want to do that last I didn't. time. Exactly. So now you're trying to do the same thing again. You're just delaying it. I'm not delaying it. I'm telling you, if you got to go down that route, we, we, we better put the best possible uh, option available. That's what, and, and, that's and what we got elected and, and to do. what you're proposing, I don't think is. So what would be the best possible? You're, so you're saying that term limits, are, so when it boils down to it, are you in favor of term limits as a whole or not? I agree with you of saying let the voters decide. I can agree with it. On term limits. On term limits. So right now you're saying that if we get a proposal, you would vote in favor of term limits for the voters to decide. No. For the voters to decide, and going back to what Mary says, you're going to put that stuff on the agenda on how we operate. Because remember, everything, every decision you make affects certain things, right? So what would you be able to tell us that we, that we couldn't find for ourselves? Because I do my research. I came prepared. Um, and so what would you put, what more information could you give to us that we would need in order to make this decision? I would simply write up because your job is just to do the verbiage, correct? Yeah. So they, their their job is not to. So we need to so, go but, into the okay. charter. So let me let me use this example. Go to the McAllen Charter. The Brownsville Charter. Every charter is different. Yeah. So we need to look at the Harlingen. Charter, yes, exactly. And we need to write it up in a way that works in the Harlingen Charter. Right? Exactly. And, and right now we don't have term limits. The details. How many how many terms are you want to limit? One, two, three. How do you want to do it? Do you want to change the three-year term to a four-year term, or do you want to leave it at three? Right now it's staggered. So we go into the charter. We've already identified the charter provision. We'll write it up. I'm hearing you say two, and you're saying, I never said two. I said three, saying, three. I never said two. 
I said keep it all the same. And what I'm proposing, and this is up for Same for two term limits. Two term a term right now is three years. What I'm saying, let me I'll let you know what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I want three the, the limit would be three year three three year terms. Three three year terms. That's what I would okay. prefer. But it'd be both okay. for negotiation. But, but just in this meeting right now, the last ten minutes, we What's looked up? up an option that McCallum had and said, Well, but that doesn't affect if they go to run for mayor, it's not gonna affect them. See, that's an important that's an important part of the puzzle. But we can right? settle that right here. I understand it. But so I, I would we... like to look at what Braswell does. Again, and if we're going to change the way we do this. Give me stuff. five minutes and I'll let you know what okay. Braswell does. They have two commissioners at large. We're not going to switch and, that. I'm sorry. We're probably not going to switch that. The city, Why not? The, because why the voters of Orange already decided decide that. that. Let the, the voters decide that. They already did. That's why you're single no, member district. Well, they haven't. No, well, they, can, they, 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 they have not they decided they could, that. Yeah, they, they could did. Decide it. No, they, they could make another change Mayor. in a charter amendment, just like right. you're uh, like you're proposing with regard to term L limits. Uh, L Commissioner Puente, let me just let me just clarify my intent on this. Wasn't to make a decision on how many years or how many terms or how long the mayor can run. All I wanted was a discussion. To, and the direction would be kind of like on the same thing on the discussion on, on uh, the charter amendment or charter to change uh, the board appointments to where everybody benefits, including the citizens. So the direction that I'd like to take is to do the same thing. Let's review the charter, Harlingen's charter, <coughs> and let's compare apples to apples with the other cities if we can, and then we can come back and decide how we want to do it because I'm not ready. I, I, I'm, I'm for term limits depending on how many years. I, I'm not comfortable with two terms or three terms. Again, I just want to, re, to, to explore and like Commissioner Uribe says, let's see what other cities are doing in comparison to Harlingen. We can't, we can't compare ourselves to McAllen or Brownsville because obviously they're a little bit different. Yeah, but, but my again, thing is- Wait, wait, Reen. Just, my intent was just to get more information on the process and changing that and then taking whatever we can agree upon to the citizens of Harangen if, if we can. So just want to make that clear. So we're going to prepare a, a template for you. We're going to look at the relevant charter provisions and we would prepare a template for you that accomplishes. I, I've lost track. Was, was there a motion? No. Somebody no, makes. Has anybody made a motion? No. Right now we're still in discussion part. There's no motion. Because <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what they what they want. Because I want term limits. That's what I want. And from what I'm understanding from Commissioner Uribe and Commissioner Puente is that they just want to keep on researching and researching. When this is honestly something that I brought up before, I brought up again. And I mean, come on, guys. But you want to shove down the number of years. You want to shove it down the citizens' throats instead of. You're, you're telling them this is what y'all get to vote on instead of that's not really giving them an option. You're saying you want to do two or three terms. You three, want to limit three, three, three year terms. That's ideally what I want to do. Okay, that's what you want to do. I don't want to do that. I just want to explore. And that's term where limits. we talk about it right here. Instead of right. delaying and delaying and delaying. We're not delaying it. We're this is the process. So the process right. is part of getting the information back so that we can better understand that so we can make a concise good decisions for our citizens and not just just us i so, think uh, it will help you if you let us get a template we'll put the charter language up we'll show you and, what and, the amendment would and, have to and, be and, and it would have to become an ordinance that would be a measure that goes for, up for election right. next May okay. as really, a charter I can, and i can agree with you that, that yeah that should be uh, they should be very capable of bringing that back at our next meeting not okay so next meeting this would be, you guys would have that for the board appointment, for the airport board, and the term limits that would be available in the next meeting. Well, I mean, the, I understand what you want. I'm a little make fuzzy it, on what the board wants, but it will help you if we have the template. Okay, then you so all then can would, hone I, in on would what you, you want. guys agree with making a motion to instruct the, uh, to extract the attorney to bring us a template for, the, for term limits on the next city commission meeting? I, I would agree with that if we're going to, if we include the way we vote ourselves in. Uh, uh, what do you mean? As a what, what do you mean by that one, please? Because, uh, again, I would like to explore saying, okay. Uh, like have, three years, two years, and all that stuff? Is that what you mean? No, I'm talking about how we're represented, where you have the mayor at large, put two commissioners at large, 
and everybody else by district, maybe we increase the number of commissioners. I don't know. How, I mean, I don't know, but I'd like to explore that, okay, and, and bring that option to the table. And then also put on the fact that if you're going to re restrict, uh, re redistribute how we do the airport, then we got to look at all airports and saying, you know, let's just do everything, clean everything up, and, and, and then put all that on the ballot. If you, I would agree with that, with what you're saying. We put that as a separate item and instruct them to do that. What you're saying about the redistricting and all that stuff, or that large, you want to do that separate item, but I want the term limits by itself. So we'd have the, we'd have, we'd instruct them right now, make a motion to instruct the attorneys to bring us a template or, or the information that we need to make a decision next commission meeting on the airport board, on the term limits, well, and also. You've already of the airport board. So okay, just, that's what I'm saying. Don't, okay. don't, you've already done that. So okay, I know, but I'm speaking to just Richard. Do, just do term just Term limits, <laughs> and then also the. Commission well, makeup. Okay. Commission makeup. I'm right. sorry? The, the commission makeup. Makeup of the, the commission, what he's talking yes. about. Yes. So uh, the, um, Richard. Right, so itself. that's a motion. It was just motion. Second. Is there a, okay, wait a second. So All, Richard, is there a discussion? You, wait, wait. Um, your, what I hear you saying, and correct me, is, is the law of unintended, unintended consequences. If you jiggle one thing, it affects everything else. Right. And you want to look at how one jiggle affects everything else. Exactly right. right? And then, um, before Morales was sworn in here um, last week, the you had beat an incumbent. De La Rosa had beat an incumbent. After how long? After how long? And uh, I don't know. And um, almost ten years. Did and, you? And Puente beat an incumbent. So we had a sixty percent uh, a victory rate of challengers over incumbents, and that is what I call term limits. Mike, are you afraid of giving the people of Harlingen a, a voice, a choice? On term limits, just like you said they want a choice. Are you afraid of me expressing my uh, opinions and asking questions? I'm not afraid of it. I just don't, I mean, you keep repeating yourself. But okay, well, let him, I don't, this uh, is the only uh, time I spoke him, in this whole finish. thing. I've not let, repeated let anything. Let finish his statement, and, okay? And, and then if anybody has on their bingo card the word delay, you win. Thank you. Okay. So we have a motion in a second. All right, is, it, is, there, is there any other discussion? Do you have a question? No, sir. Okay. Well, uh, the math it, the math that he just cited. Is there, Mr. Well, Morales no, I'm asking, the I'm asking the commission if there's any other discussion. No, no. sir. There's no discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. Opposed. Okay. The motion carries. Item 16 is the discussion, consideration, and possible action to re-enroll the city of Harlton into the TMRS retirement system. This is a, uh, oh, sorry. Have you opened up for discussion? Hmm? I think, did you open up for discussion already? Y'all you all made the, y'all put the item on the okay, agenda cool. so either one of you can. I know we have, I think we have a representative from the TMRS, right? Yes. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, commissioners. I'm Colin Davidson. I am from TMRS. I'm a city services manager. I hope to answer any questions you have about how the process would work of rejoining TMRS. I know you already a part of TMRS for a lot of your employees, but if you were looking to re-enroll new employees that have been hired since that, that separation date, my thought was that I'd give you just make sure everybody understands kind of how the plan works in general, and then talk about the process that would be involved if you were to go ahead and re-enroll new employees. So if anybody doesn't know TMRS, we're a statewide retirement system. We have close to 900 cities that participate in the plan. Every city that joins is going to be slightly different. I know in several of the comments this evening, everybody's talking about different comparable cities and how everybody in TMRS gets to choose the level of benefits. So we have cities as large as Arlington, Corpus Christi, you know, San Antonio, and we have cities, we have about 15 cities that actually only have a single employee. And so one of the hallmarks of TMRS is really about flexibility, allowing cities to choose the level of benefits that they feel are appropriate for their city. They can choose the amount that the employees put in. They can choose the amount that they match at retirement. They can even make choices, as the city of Harlingen did in 2007, to actually stop enrolling new employees. So really, one of the things that TMRS prides itself on is giving flexibility to cities. We're also about sustainability. TMRS has been around since the 1940s, so we're close to 75 years now. And actually, I looked it up today. The uh, city of Harlingen is actually their 49th anniversary. So this month, 49 years ago, is when the city joined TMRS. So we've been part of the plan since that time. And with the sustainability, it's not just about today's retirees, it's about future retirees. So 
every decision that TMRS makes is really with that in mind. So we have really conservative investment assumptions. We have one of the lower among pension systems. Uh, expected rate of return. This allows us to take on less risk with the idea being that we always want to be there long term, that we're okay having not the highest level of return because, it, again, it allows us to take on less risk and make sure this benefit plan is sustainable long term. We also do that with, in terms of our funding. The way that we have cities fund the benefit is really about making sure that by the time someone retires, the idea is that every employee, the money needed to pay their benefits, has already been paid into TMRS. So throughout a member's career, the city of Harlingen is paying in money to make sure that it's there by the time they retire. All of those payments, each individual city in TMRS is funded on their own. So all of your employees, your assets, your liabilities, those are just being paid by the city of Harlingen. So you're not having to worry about, as I mentioned, any other cities. So Brownsville or McAllen or, you know, uh, San Antonio, none of those cities affect you at all. You're only funded, your costs are only associated with the city of Harlingen's plans. Also, just want to mention, too, it's not just about, you know, TMRS since we've been around for the sustainability, the, the governance as well is about not just our staff, but we also uh, have a board, similar to the commission, that helps us make all of these decisions, and that is about our board is appointed by the governor. We also have an advisory committee that has stakeholders from all over the state. They help us make these decisions. And then we also have a whole group of consultants, whether it's investment or audit, all these independent people that are making sure that all the decisions we make are in the best interest of all of our members. So with that being said, the decision that you guys are discussing now is whether or not to re-enroll employees in TMRS. So as of September of 2007, as of that date, no new employees from that point forward were enrolled in TMRS. They were enrolled into a new primary retirement plan for the city of Harlingen, so anybody hired in October of 2007 to current has been not part of TMRS. All of the employees that were enrolled that were hired in September of 2007 or prior are still in TMRS unless they've retired or they've left and refunded their accounts. All of those members are still in TMRS and the city of Harlingen is still funding their retirement plan. The change would be that starting whenever this change takes place, the effective date, any employee from that point forward would be enrolled in TMRS. That would include not only new hires, but any employee that's been part of the plan since you've left. So any employee on the city's books right now would be immediately enrolled in TMRS. Now the enrollment threshold for TMRS has to do with full-time employment. Our statutes say that an employee would have to be, it's mandatory enrollment for anybody that's in a position that normally requires 1,000 hours in a year. That's our definition of employment. So any employee that meets that at 1,000 hours would be automatically enrolled in TMRS if the city rejoined. One of the things that's changed in the last couple years, and that hasn't changed, that's been the case over the years as we've made this discussion with Harlingen. One of the things that changed starting last year is that whenever a city is new to TMRS or they're in a situation like the city of Harlingen where they're looking at adding back employees now and re-enrolling, <coughs> is they're always going to have to give credit for the service since they left. And that's not different here, where any employee since 2007, if the city decided to rejoin, all of the time that they've had with Harlingen, if they've been working, let's say, since 2010, if the city rejoined TMRS, they would get credit for all 11 of those years since 2010 in that hypothetical. What's changed, though, is starting last year, no longer would a city have to pay in money for all of the years they've been gone. So now, all that a member would receive is a time credit for that, and that's because the city had another primary retirement plan. The current plan the city has is considered the primary retirement plan. So since now the law changed where if a city has that, they could join TMRS without paying in any of the money for all of those years. Those would be excluded from that calculation. So for those employees, and just to be clear, if the city made this choice, it would have no effect at all on any employee that's currently in TMRS. So all of those employees that would have been with the city prior to October of 2007, this change doesn't affect them at all. The only employees that are affected at all are anybody that's been on the books since that time. They would be enrolled in TMRS so they have a new retirement plan. So in terms of cost, and I know that that is kind of a, a big question here, those numbers are not quite available. We've been working really hard with staff. We've been trying to get our outside actuarial firm to get this as quickly as possible, and they hope to have it probably in the next few days. But once they have that information, we'll be able to provide you what the cost would be to add new employees back into the plan. Essentially, just to be clear, the way that TMRS funds this, I mentioned how you're funded just on your own. TMRS expresses the cost and what's known as a contribution rate. It's essentially a percentage of your payroll. So this would change now that it'd be one rate. It would be kind of a, you know, almost like a blended rate 
where you would have the cost of all of the current members of TMRS plus the cost of all these new employees, but we'd push it into one cost, and that's what the city would start paying. And if the change was made this year, it would be the same cost for both 2021 as well as 2022. So that way, for budgeting purposes, it would be the same for the next amount of time. Do, do uh, the employees that are enrolled in TMRS, do they have access to their monies? Great question. So, no. The way that this plan was set up in the 1940s and is sustained that way, as long as an employee is part of the plan, as long as they're an employee, they don't have any access to the money. The only way they'd have access is either to retire the account or if they left employment, they could withdraw their funds, but they would not, in that scenario, they wouldn't have any access to the money that's been set aside by. What's the cost on them? Like, if they, if they uh, retire early or mm -hmm. they exit the plan, how much do they get charged? And uh, as, as opposed to being fully vetted and then they retire on a, on a long term thing, and they get their full monies. Yeah. What, what are those percentages? So if they retire, they get a, a full, it's a benefit from TMRS. And I should have mentioned this, if anybody doesn't know. When TMRS, when someone retires, they get a lifetime guaranteed benefit. So it never runs out, it's, it's guaranteed for life. If an employee leaves prior to that and decides to take their money out, and this is essentially whether you'd mention be invested or not, you know, here in Harlingen, if, if you have enough years of service, if you have five years, an employee could be vested. Really what vesting means is that once an employee is vested, they could retire at age 60. So just to be clear, if somebody, whether they're vested or not, let's say they decided to leave and take their money out of TMRS, at that point, the first thing, as I mentioned, is they forfeit the city's amount, but they also are gonna pay 20% in federal income tax, and then they'll also pay a 10% penalty, potentially, depending on their age, if they're under 59 and a half, usually, for the IRS. But to be so clear, those are all IRS regulation so and taxes. That's 30% plus they lose the city's matching contribution. So Correct. So they had $100,000, they lost $50,000 plus 30% of whatever they want to pull out. Essentially. Yeah, it would be, yeah, it, it, just to be clear, none of those, the taxes, fees, all of that is IRS, none of that and comes to TMRS. you don't have any, any option on your plan where the employee gets into a bind and says, you know what, I have this money sitting there, I can pay myself back, which is like some 401k plans or some other, uh, you know, payroll plans that are out there. You don't, you don't offer that or, or that's just not what you're proposing? Yeah, that's not even offered at TMRS. It's part of the statute that doesn't allow any type of withdrawals from it. And I can tell you from, from doing this job for 15 years, the number of people I've dealt with that have called and they're gonna, their house may be foreclosed on or different things. I understand completely the idea that they would want to take money from the plan. But, but yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no provisions within our statutes that allow anything like that. A couple of questions. Sure. You said your error was low. What's your error? Error for our return on investments? Yeah. Oh, uh, 6.7. Yes, yeah, 6.75 is the assumed rate of return. Okay, and when was that last changed? That was last changed in 2015 from 7%. To currently 6.75. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, this being a defined benefit plan, um, may employees continue to fund the current plan as well as TMRS? So to be clear, can Go ahead. Can they fund the 457 plan as well as this defined benefit plan? So some of those questions about whether you'd have to close or modify the current plan would, would obviously be a legal question, both for maybe your own legal counsel as well as TMRS's, which we'd be happy to help with. I know the Texas Constitution has some requirements about a primary retirement plan, so if, if TMRS became that, uh, could this other plan serve another function? Sure, I, I don't doubt that in the sense that a lot of our cities that we participate in, especially ones that either don't have Social Security or have other restrictions, have 457 plans where employees can contribute to an alternate plan. So they can have TMRS as their primary, and the second plan where maybe a city doesn't contribute, that it works as a 457 and you, plan as well. And you said the TMRS is guaranteed. Guaranteed by whom? Guaranteed, well, by, by us being a trust. I mean, we have $35 billion in assets. We don't have any state funding or anything like that. So we do have, um, you know, we're, we're self-guaranteed, for lack of a better term. Okay. And, um, and then what are, what are your internal costs in managing money? And is everyone in the same pool, or does that change upon their age group, or can they pick and choose different investment 
uh, choices. So all of our investments are professionally managed, both by <coughs> internal staff as well as outside consultants. So no one gets to make individual investment choices. Um, but so there's just there's one pool. And so for an individual member, we actually have a investment return of 5%. So members are guaranteed to receive on their account balance every year 5%. And, and that's guaranteed? That is guaranteed. So that's guaranteed by statute. And then through, um, through TMRS for city rates, so cities have an account the same way that members are paying in money out of their paycheck, the city is funding their benefit. That stays in an account that essentially the cities that they earn interest on every year. And there's not a guaranteed interest rate on that amount. Um, that just depends on the overall investments, how much is credited. What, what your returns have been, let's say, annually for the last five years, uh, for the last individually or, or um, corporately? Yeah, so for the last five years, so this last year was 7% was our overall rate. In 2020? Rate of return. In 2020, correct. That was our, our credit. 7%? Rate. 7%. So Gee, the S&P 500 returned 16. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, you know, our, our investment strategy is not to, to outperform everyone or even to hit the highest standards of, and of how everything. are you doing year to date do you have those numbers i don't have year-to-date numbers yeah i know that we're up for the year but where we're at currently um but over the last five years i know we've returned overall over 10 percent but that's ups and downs so 10 percent a year for the last not, five years not yeah not per year it's been you know years up and down and i can get those numbers for you but the year i'm securities years. license yeah you may have guessed yeah um and so you're working with Robert and the finance department to determine how many millions of dollars a year this is going to cost the city? We have been working with the city to determine the cost for sure. You know, one of the things that we've been working with and, and getting information back and forth is getting the information for all the employees. So how many employees, their, how old they are, their current salaries, how many years of service. That way we can appropriately, you know, make sure we have the funding and right for that. Okay. And so then with the uh, funding of this, the employees fund X percent? They do. So the as required by the plan. Correct. The employees fund 7% of their gross compensation that okay. goes and into the plan. And then what does the city have to match? So the city has to match their account balance at retirement, which includes the 7% that they're putting in, <clears throat> plus the 5% interest credit that they're accumulating throughout their career. And then the city matches that balance at 200% at retirement, which is either 20 years at any age or as I mentioned earlier, five years at age 60. And that's okay. just to follow up on the point you made earlier about it being a defined benefit plan, you know, within TMRS, really their benefit is defined by their cash balance at retirement. So there's not right. an ultimate calculation unlike a, a teacher retirement system or some of the others. So, so there's an open-ended uh, potential liability for the city. Um, it's is, is that what you just said? I don't know if I'd call it open-ended. It's essentially, it's going to continue to match whatever contributions are being made. Okay, so let's review again. Sure. So the employee, the, the employee puts in 7% of their payroll. Correct. And the city matches how much? The city matches 200% or a two-to-one match for every so, dollar. So the city puts in 15%. Uh, it's ultimately, whatever their final balance is, that's what gets matched two to one. So that includes not only the 7%, but it also includes any interest that's accrued on that balance. Can you give an example of so, just somebody making $1,000 a week? Yeah. So let's just say throughout their time, somebody is making $100,000 a year. We'll keep the numbers because I, I need numbers no, to be simple. City, so come down <laughs> All right. I was like, I need simple numbers right. for me. Um, let's say 50000 a year. Would Good that work? Goal. Okay. So at fifty thousand dollars a year, thirty five hundred. Yeah. So an employee would put in thirty five hundred dollars into their account for that year. If they continue to do that throughout, let's say for and ten, good. The, the city would put in how much? Well, the city's rate is actually the city in theory would match that. If that employee was ready to retire, they'd match it with seven thousand because they're matching every dollar with two dollars of their own. Okay, so it costs the city seven thousand, and 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 the employees put in thirty five hundred. So that's ten thousand five hundred a year. <clears throat> Correct. But, the but, the, but the but only it, thing but, I would but, go ahead. But, it, but isn't the city's contribution based on the rate calculations? So it's not really two to one. It's, I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. You're exactly right. You've been doing this a lot. You, you know how the ins and outs of TMRS. No, that's exactly right. And that's the point I was going to make is that on the benefit side, from the employee side, <coughs> they're going to see a two to one match on their money. Because by the time they retire, that money's been funded. But the actual cost is going to be less than a true, in your example, 3500 for the employee, 
7,000 Because for you're the using city. actuarial tables. Correct. We're using actuarial tables, and because the day an employee starts in Harlingen, their benefit is already being funded from the city. And we know that that employee, in most cases, isn't going to be eligible for 20 years. But, but so those one, the investment. Pay, they're so, they're so, paid to, so, to and, DMRS and, and, every year, or every month, every check. It, a good example, I think, our, this year, our, our rate of pay, our, our contribution for those employees that are still in TMRS, it's not 14 percent. It's 11.2 percent and something. Yeah, I'm pretty close. But but and, and the reason being is that as you have employees that leave <coughs> prior to being eligible to retire, the city's portion of contribution stays in the fund, which helps offset any future additions or in, uh, <coughs> but, uh, contributions. But you can get the information of I guess when you work with Robert. Uh, it's how much more that's going to cost the city? Yes, that they'd have to do the, an actuarial study, uh, and right now all we're providing them with you know because what, what preliminary I'm, information with with employees. Because what I'm looking at is uh, you know we had that 40 plus percent increase in insurance, and then if we're going to increase, you know, we got to figure out where, you know, again it's always about where, where's the money going to come from if we well, decide to go this route. If we could take oh, here's, it. Let me let me ask it. I'll just clarify a couple sure. things. One is. We've already established that everybody knows this is a defined benefit plan, right? Yeah, it has defined. The city's current plan really is not. It has features of a defined benefit in the sense that it's a lifetime payment, but the benefit is defined by the amount of money in the account at retirement. So There's not a calculation that takes into so account when, salary and, and things that a traditional defined benefit plan, like a teacher's so retirement system, et cetera. When you, when you send a when you send the city a, a, a notice that. Our unfunded liability portion of of the plan is, say, eighteen million dollars, okay. which it has been in the past. What does that mean? Can you explain that? Sure. So the city's unfunded liability is essentially that the amount of money that's needed to fully fund the plan to get it to a hundred percent. So, like right now, when I look at it for next year, the city is at ninety-eight percent funded. That means all the money needed to fund everybody's retirement through TMRS and Harlingen, 98% of that money has been paid. So the number you referenced, so starting for 2022, that number is 1.9 million. So over the next period of years, the city will pay down that amount with the amount they pay each year. So I know uh, the city but manager- could also go but that also changes. It could also go up significantly, right? It, every if, year if, there's gonna be right, a valuation. If, if your rate of return, if your rate of return drop below 6.7%, 6, 6 sure. say to 4% or 3%, which it could, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and, and life expect, and life, actually life expectancy went down this year. So. Yeah. Uh, because of COVID-19, but you yeah. know, hopefully we're, we're going to have we're going to start seeing uh, uh, additional extensions of life expectancy, like we've seen over the last 20 years. So that could also change the assumptions that you've made in terms of that, and that that cr that could increase our unfunded liability, uh, and, which means that if it, there is a shortfall, uh, we can't and. That the city would have to, and that's why that's why uh, the governmental accounting standards board changed this. They used to say you don't have to put this on your on your balance sheet. Mm -hmm. Now they say no, you got to put that unfunded liability on your balance sheet because that's a real li potential liability, right? Sure, the total pension it's liability. It's a real now. potential yep. liability, and our our uh, unfunded liability has been as high as I don't know, close to twenty million dollars right. in the past. Yeah, so I, that's I, I remember concern. 19 that's million in change. That you have a potential unfunded liability. You could you could end up, and we've ended up with TMRS with this unfunded liability in a uh, 401k style plan like we have now for mm -hmm. new hires since 2007. That's real money. I mean, that's real money in the bank. There's no potential liability to the city associated with having to pay out pension benefits in the future. Uh, employees have more flexibility with in terms of being able to withdraw it. Uh, they have more flexibility in terms of being portable. So especially with younger employees, what we're seeing is that younger employees move around more than employees, say, 20 or 30 years ago, uh, stayed with the same company for 30 years. And now uh, that, that provides a benefit to the younger, the younger employees. So really the question here, the, the choice it's whether you want to get back into a retirement uh, pension type plan that carries with it a potential uh, huge liability to the citizens and taxpayers uh, of the city of Harlingen, or uh, uh, 
you want you want to eliminate that risk. Because if my you issue. Want to, if you want to take on that risk, uh, then you potentially go back to the TMRS. If you don't want that risk, then you stick with what you you, you, you minimize that risk by continuing with with a 401k style and, and, plan. Excuse here, here me. Is if, my issue. If, because if, when I'm sorry, here is my issue. It's when they get penalized. I mean, and and that happens a lot. And all that money ends up coming back to the city or whatever. And that just became a tax. That's a tax on the employee. So that employee worked all that money and, and, and it gets put in there. And they get, they get dinged on. Uh, it, it's, it's, um, but don't they get what you were saying right now, that they're, what he's talking about, that they get um, penalized. You said that's not you guys. That's IRS. So if a regular, the plan that we have right now, I'm not sure how it works. Well, but if they were to take out money, wouldn't they get penalized either way? No, no, no. But they can borrow against it. And, I, and they pay themselves back. That's that's the big thing. They can say, "Hey man, you know what? I got I got two hundred thousand dollars. I need I need, need about twenty grand." They go borrow twenty thousand dollars, and they pay themselves back over time. However, they set up the loan. No, no, and, I agree with that. And, that's and that's good. a great benefit to the employee. But I, I because would because a lot of times they'll they'll go look for a job, more money, whatever, and 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 uh, <coughs> they don't have that right of access to that money. Because this one, they, with this plan, <laughs> they're never going to see it. But I, I can you basically know? guarantee that most of the employees that we have would want probably the TMRS because it's a guaranteed lifetime benefit. Oh, maybe so. Maybe We're so. losing a lot of a lot of the police officers that we have that have right. been here for a while. We lose a lot of them, the ones that have the experience, because they go to other cities that have this T and, TMRS. And, and, and again, no. it's, it's, it's can we afford it? That's the always question I'm going to ask. Can, That's, at, at this present time, can we afford to make that move? And you, we went to this budget workshop this morning. I guess the number that scared me the most was that insurance uh, uh, hurdle we're going to have to would, come up with. No, I agree. Like right now, what I want to do is what I want to do is I want to get the I don't want to make a decision kind of like what you how you wanted before in the terminus. You want more, more information? information? That's what I want. That's why I wanted uh, to and, give and, Dan and, and, and the go-ahead to look for that. Greg, I, I, think that's a good, I think that's a good idea. That's I think a support. Like a, a big decision like this, we're going to have a workshop on it. Yeah, because I want more information to see because I know ultimately I believe that this would be best for the city employees because the city employees, we want to encourage retention. We want them to come here to Harlingen and say, you know what, I'm going to work here because the employees have the experience. They're going to be the better employees. And he's not, he's not ready anyway with the numbers. Yeah, exactly. We don't, know what the, we don't know what the cost is. So I think this is a great, I think this is a great discussion. I think, it's a, uh, I think it's a great discussion, and I think we ought to have it. Uh, I do want to address your uh, do want to address your retention thing because we, we we this came up there was a push to, to go back in a couple of years ago and and we uh, actually five years ago so we did we, we studied uh, resignations and it was determined that there really was no association between being a TMRS and police officer resignations or retirements. Uh, in fact, the, the year that we had the largest, uh, the year that we had the largest <laughs> number of, of loss to resignations and retirements was a year in which we had TM, which we did have TMRS. Honestly, so the, I've just, heard the I opposite. Wanted, but I just and I think and I think we should update this because in the last five years, it could have changed. Uh, but I, I, I think we ought to ask for that. But I think. I think you've uh, initiated a good discussion. We're glad that you're here today. And if you all agree that we need a workshop on it, then why don't we just uh, direct the staff to set up a workshop, get the additional information, then we can make a decision at that time after we have all the numbers. I agree. How about that? Okay. Uh, sounds good. Because uh, the reason I brought this is because, Dan, you said you needed some kind of permission or something from us in order to start getting the information, right? Well, the, uh, they need to move forward with an actual study. That's the only way we're going to get the numbers back. And I think they should move forward with that. So, do we need to make a motion or anything to, in order to? It, no, I, I, I can just I can just direct him to. It's not going to cost us anything. Nope. And so he can just get us a number. So what? What, what the mayor did not point out is when our liabilities go up, that could lower our bond rating. Under the the recent laws of a few years ago, because uh, since we have to report that as a deficit, <coughs> that, that is a debt that we owe to the future retirees. And so that does affect our uh, bond rating. And <coughs> I know with the fireman's pension, when the returns of years ago were pretty damn anemic in the returns, the city had to pony up millions of dollars into the fireman's pension. And so... That's right. Uh, I, I would like to ask. So, so with TMRS, we could be in the... We could have the financial obligation and responsibility to suddenly fund millions of dollars. <coughs> the stock market's not going to go up forever. It does uh, go sideways 
it ha does have long periods of anemia up to 15, 17 years where returns are mediocre to piss poor. And so your 6.75, you all didn't meet that last year. You only made 5%. Um, no, we, we, we exceeded that. We had over 7%, but what we credited to members was 5%, and then the excess went to cities. And, and to your point, we also do some things, you know, we, all of the, gain, uh, the actual gains or losses in a particular year aren't realized immediately. We Correct. do have some smoothing Correct. techniques and all of that, Correct. which you're yes. aware of. But. Okay, sir, so I have a couple of requests sure. when you pull your information together. Sure. I'd like to see the number of cities that are over a $20 million, what did you call it? Liability. Unfunded, li unfunded liability. Unfunded you liability. And what is the percentage of that uh, to your to your uh, memberships, right? Uh, and uh, um, what are the costs involved? Your all's cost to manage that money. Sure. And is it based on the, the enrollment, the number of dollars you're doing? How is that calculated? And what is the average cost uh, for you know what is what is going to what is going to cost us for you to to manage this 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 money that doesn't get. To benefit to the employees or whatever sure you you pull from that so just a couple things to clarify and i'm happy to you know get all that information i can get that for you i do do want to mention a couple things just about the liability first in general anytime a city has an unfunded liability there is a schedule to pay that off we have closed amortization schedules it's over a 20-year period so there is there is an appropriate funding of that to make sure that like i've mentioned we're our whole goal is to get every city to 100 percent funded we have over 250 now cities that are over 100 percent funded or at 100 percent. so that's the goal for every city so that would take time obviously if the city joins how many, how many people do you represent? How many cities? Uh, close to 900 now. How many in the valley? What, what is the percentage of that? 20 by 900? Uh, that it's, so it, it's about 25 percent that are 100 percent funded. But we're as a system, we're at basically 90 percent as a system wide. Yet, 20. You said yeah, 20, 20 cities over 100 percent funded. How many in the valley right? do? 20 we? cities out of out of let's say a thousand for easy math. That's two percent. Sorry. Uh, 20%. So we're at 250 cities that have approximately 100% funded. And as a system, we're, we're at 89.5% funded. So we're, we're at 90%, which, you know, uh, over 80%, especially trending. We've been trending that way. We were 85, 86, 87 as a system. The same way the city is, we're paying off our liabilities as a system you as well. Present that with actual numbers so we can see. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then the only thing I was going to say, I, I'm happy to prevent, to provide as many cities $20 million if that's the cutoff you want to do. But I will say, as I mentioned, every city is different. And so, this city having 20 million liability for San Antonio is definitely different than the city of Harlingen or a city with an individual player. So I'll provide that information. Just want to kind of give that preface as well. Uh, do, you, do you know how many cities here in the Valley have the TMRS? Uh, essentially all that, I mean, of moderate size. I mean, all of the, you know, between McAllen, Brownsville, Edinburgh, you know, depending on who you're, all the cities I've heard referenced this evening. The Far, San Juan, Westlaco. Yep. So we're basically the only ones that don't, the, of the midst of the bigger cities. I, as far as I know, yes. I'm not as the geography down here. I don't know every. Do, do particular so somehow city. it works. Yeah. Do you, do you know their unfunded liability? I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah. No, but you can get that. Sure. I can get cities for all those comparable cities if you like. We can get their unfunded liability, their funding ratio. I mean, I do have some of their. Um, I actually have you know a few. Mind me pulling out my phone at a, at a commissioner meeting. But for example, um, McAllen is at 93 percent funded. So okay. So that that seven percent represents how much unfunded liability. Uh, partly, it's essentially the seven percent. They're, they're, once they have the hundred percent, they'll have paid off their liability. Right. So that's the seven percent represents how much? That I'm not sure. Of. That's the thing. Yeah, I don't have that. Uh, I just have their funding so percentages. So it's better to get all the information than present it. Yeah, that's fine. I think a, a budget workshop makes sense. Okay. All right. Well, then uh, no action that's on this item. I'm just going to other than the direct okay. staff to okay. set up a okay. workshop with TMRS. Okay. Uh, very good. Unless there are any other questions, thank you for being here. You're very welcome. It. Item 17 is consideration of possible action to appoint a representative <clears throat> as the official member to the Amigos del Valle Board of Directors for fiscal year 2020-21. Mayor, Commissioners, a current appointment uh, is uh, former Commissioner Victor Leal. Uh, so uh, we want to bring this to the City Commission's attention. Uh, do we want to move forward and appoint someone new to the Amigos del Valle Board? And if so, uh, who would like to volunteer? It has to be somebody from this board. It, mm -hmm. It's any way the city council wants to do it. Don't anybody volunteer all at once? <laughs> uh, you, did, did someone raise their hand? I didn't. I didn't. Some, really, really, well, no, I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> question. I'm, I'm, I'm ignorant when it comes to the Migos of Iowa. What do they do? See, I may not be able to serve on that. They, because it, it's, they, they have a lot of programs that help uh, uh, the elderly. Oh, so that would be like more like Frank, like Puente. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
That hurts, sir, because Frank and I are the same age. Meals on Wheels. Meals on Wheels. They do Meals on Wheels. We have a, the meals on we, wheels we have a uh, facility here in Harlingen that's operated uh, by Meals on Wheels uh, uh, for, for, for residents that need but Their Meals on Wheels program is a great program. And how often do they meet? It's monthly. It's monthly. And is it's, a, are, it's a great organization. No, no, yeah, but because I wouldn't mind, to be honest, but what, like, do they meet during the day, during their meeting oh, afternoon? It's basically at 12 noon. At 12 noon. I'd like to point out that I am the alternate, so one of you uh, does become a member, you can't attend, I would uh, go uh, from, like in to, your place. Uh, uh, they're they're going to appoint you, Gabe. You should I like to, stay to, seated. I'd like to nominate Rini. <laughs> Second. I don't mind, but it's just like I'm they, saying, if it's at 12, we have, a, we have a first and a second. But, but okay, we have it, a first and a second. Noon. All those in it favor say aye. 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 All right. Thank, thank you, you, Commissioner Pettis, for agreeing to serve. <laughs> Item 18, our board of I just want to point out, I think I'm the youngest one here. But, okay. <laughs> but not the prettiest. <laughs> okay. Board, board appointments. I have two, Mayor. Uh, to the downtown improvement district, Lars. Okay. Kim. Kim. That's a reappointment. Larry, Larry right? Kai. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Lars I know him by Lars. And then uh, John Piercy to the uh, DID as well. <laughs> John, I'm sorry, sir. John Piercy. Oh, okay. I think he's on there now. I'm just going to read from The architect. Yes. Yeah, uh, the downtown uh, nominate Stephanie Sokolowski for the VA, uh, remove John Claudio, he's moved away, add Lauren Campbell, uh, the Veterans Advisory Board, and then uh, Tracy Gonzalez to the library board. And if necessary, then remove Elva Munoz to make space for Tracy Gonzalez. But if I have two slots, that would be nice for both of them. Okay, sir. For Mr. The Morales, do you have any tonight? Not yet, but I will next week. I'm, I'm sure meeting. you will. Okay, Commissioner Pettis. Um, for the downtown district board, I want to put Raymond Reyes. And then I would also want to put on the downtown um, district board, um, Jesus Peña. And then also I would like to make a change to one of my previous selections on the golf course advisory board. I would like to appoint um, Omar Villarreal to that board. Okay. And uh, <coughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure if this is an appointment or not, but I, I want to, if I need to appoint, build, reappoint, build a brook to the downtown improvement district uh, I would like to appoint him and then to the airport board uh, I'd like to reappoint Tito Resendez and then uh, uh, add uh, Colonel Christopher Dowling to replace Richard Frankie all right that's all I have is there a motion to approve Second. board appointments Second. Motion, motion to second. second all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. those opposed like sign motion carries item 19 is executive closed session on the following item attorney consultation pursuant to section 5.1.071 Texas government code to provide legal advice and counsel in connection with the settlement offer and pending litigation it's filed a number of Pena versus city of Arlington civil action 20 CB 063 U.S. District Court Brown Division related to legal matters so uh, moved so much to go to executive session so moved we need a vote guys hey, we need a, Richard, uh, all Richard. those in favor say aye oh, aye, aye. 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 Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be uh, meeting with our attorneys in a closed session, and there is no action after that item, so thank you all for being here tonight. All right, then we are out of executive session at 8.13 p.m., there being no further items on the agenda, we are adjourned. Thank you all and good night, everybody. Have a safe evening.